What's going on, everybody? I'm Jeremy, and you guys are watching Warfels Morris. This is going to be the second video in our Husbandry Pro kind of walkthrough showing off how to use this awesome software. So make sure you guys watch this video the whole way through because we're going to be going over this week on how to make your labels, your cage cards, all that stuff, designing them, printing them off, all that good information. So make sure you guys watch this the whole way through because if you miss one part of it, it might you might just be a little bit lost with it. Um, some of this stuff can be a little bit tricky. And this is something that I think a lot of people, from what I've noticed, are asking the most questions about. So that's why I figured I'd hit this like basically, boom, like right now. Hopefully this video will help answer a lot of questions. And that way, you know, it just helps people not get, you know, be stuck and just keeps them trucking right along using this awesome software. So if you guys haven't already, though, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit the like button, drop me a comment down below. What do you guys think of this series? Is it being helpful for you at all? I appreciate all your feedback. On top of it, make sure you guys check out the sponsors of this week's episode. I'd like to thank Nathan at Infinite Possible Pythons for sponsoring this week's episode. If you need a ball python, corn snake, gecko, or if you have any branding needs, he has you covered. Check out his links in the description down below. If you want to use the best reptile record keeping and tracking software on the market today, scan the QR code or click our partnership link in the description down below for a free 30-day trial of Husbandry Pro. I promise you, you will not regret it. Thank you, everybody, for sponsoring this week's episode. I greatly appreciate it. And on top of it, if you guys aren't using Husbandry Pro yet and you're watching this video, click our affiliate link in the description down below. It's a free 30-day trial. I promise you, you will not regret trying the software out. And I almost guarantee you that you'll probably sign up with an actual uh, plan. So click our partnership link in the description down below. I appreciate all the support. Thank you. So let's dive into this video. Um, we're going to be doing a share screen just like last time. And I'm going to walk you guys through how to do all the different labels and all that fun stuff. So let's get this show on the road, folks. All right. So we're here in the Husbandry Pro. So let's go down to Utilities, which is where all your label design and cage cards and stuff, this is where you do all of this stuff at. We're going to start off with the Dymo printer labels. Um, I haven't physically used any of these yet. Uh, I said it will just go with one of the um, things that's pre-selected here. We'll go with the two inch by three and a half. And then you go over here and hit continue. Now you can, here, I'll back up here once. Uh, not, hold on. Go back into here. Now you can create a custom label if you don't like any of these pre-selected sizes. I did put a thing out there for test. I just wanted to kind of run through this a little bit here before I actually started, you know, doing the uh, the actual video here for you. So you can create your custom label. That basically allows you to customize the size, however you want to do it. But we're just going to use the regular two inch by three and a half inch label. And then you go over here and you click continue. Now here you can decide if you want to hide the QR code. Don't know why you would want to do that, but you could if you wanted to. I strongly suggest you keep the QR code there. You can keep standard QR code label selected, or you can use the activity specific QR code label. Um, I would recommend using the standard QR code. That way you can scan it and select which activity you're going to you know, do. If you do the activity specific, that QR code is only good for that activity. So standard, I think, is a little bit better option, but do what you will. And then you go down here to fields and you can select whatever you want to keep track of, folks. I mean, whatever you want to be have information wise on this QR or on this label. So we'll go with the animal ID, uh, descriptor, uh, sex, uh, genetics. Uh, trying to think what else here. What else here you would want maybe on? That's probably good enough. Um, now, if you're using this for like shows, you might want to put it, click in the sales price. You can have that there on the Dymo label thing. So there, that will be, we'll just let that be how we're going to have our label set up here. So you can go and you can save this as a preset thing, which would allow you then to, you know, name it. I'm not going to bother doing that because I don't use the Dymo labels, but you could save it 
And then so that way you have this save for any of your animals that you're going to be using at shows. That's where the sales price comes into play. So you, you could save this as, say, sales labels or whatever you want to name it, you know, um, and then save. But like I said, I'm not going to bother saving it because I don't use the Dymo stuff. Then you would click continue. And then you can select whatever animals you want to go down through and print the labels for. And then we'll just uh, we'll just click here. Um, just that way we have something selected. And then click continue. And we'll let this load up here. Okay, there we go. All right. I was down too far. Now here's your label. This is how it's going to look. And then you would then hit print. Now, like I said, you could do multiple labels. Um, I just selected one just because, you know, this is just the demo. But then you would hit print and your label would then print. Um, let's just see what happens if I do hit print. See, it goes, there would be the label. Um, my guess would be is that I need to have a printer, you know, tied into my laptop here. But like I said, we're not using the Dymo stuff. I don't have a Dymo, print, a Dymo label printer, so we're not going to worry about that. So that being said, that's how you would do your Dymo labels. Now let's go back here to utilities, and we're going to go to uh, Cage Card Designer. Now this is what I had originally started off with. Um, now this will print you out a simple, easy card just like this. You know, you have your QR code, still has all your information. Now, uh, we will get into the last thing I'll cover is making one of these, which is basically the same thing. It's got the same information on it, but it's, you know, it gives you a little, it's a little bit more attractive looking uh, card. But we're going to cover the actual cage cards right now. So let's dive into that. So we'll go back here, bring up the share screen. Now, as you can see, I already have a preset one made up. Um, you would then click design or delete you know you, you go in here to design to design there again it's just like the dymo labels you can name it uh you have a couple different size options here that you can go with i went with the three and a half by two um the new avery i don't know what the avery uh avery 55 871 i don't know what the difference is between the avery and the new avery i also don't all right, that here the size would be slightly different there. Obviously, the two and five eighths by one. So yeah, I don't know exactly what the difference is between the two Averys, but this is just how I have mine set up. And you would then you know select whatever fields you want to keep track of on the card, and then you can keep it as active or inactive. I have it selected as active, and you would hit save changes. So now. You have your options set up here as to what your card looks like in this, you know, your, your the specs of that card. Now to print out those cards, you go here to where it says print cage cards. Click that. And, you know, all right, here you can select whatever, you know, I only have one preset thing, but here is, you know, you would select your different uh, style of cage cards, whatever you want to use. Whatever you have, you know, pre-saved will come into here. We're just going to stick with WM1. Uh, you can change your printing position, your font size, all that stuff. And here's where you change all that. You can select if you want to print off cards for your racks right here, which is very nice for the bulk feeding option. Uh, I did this for my racks with the sheet label designer, which we will get into next. And then here you can go and you can select your animals. Now, I'll just show you guys, you know, I'll just select, you know, I don't know, we'll just select these. And then we'll go down here to print label. Now here, this is what your sheet will look like. Now, granted, this is designed for just printing on a piece of paper. Um, this is how I have mine set up. And basically all I did was after I would print these off, I'd draw lines with the ruler, cut them out, and then I would then uh, laminate them. And then, you know, use whatever means you want to use to adhere them to the tubs. I used Velcro. Uh, I thought that was very handy and nifty because as you move snakes around, you can then just, you know, 
pull it off of that tub and smack, you know, slap it on the new tub. Very uh, efficient and effective, and it worked. So that's how you do the cage cards. Now, this is what we're, we're going to go back here to utilities. And now we're going to go into sheet label designer. Now, let me pull, so I'll show you guys here real quick. Now, we just went over how to make these. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to make these. And you can do these several different ways, um, depending what you have access to printer wise. These, you know, basically it's going to be the same deal as these, only this takes a little bit of extra work to get this nice fancy stuff going on with it as far as the backgrounds and everything. I'm going to cover that right now. So stay with me on this. All right. So let's go through the sheet label designer. Now, this is my favorite. Um, I'm sure probably a lot of people will be more using this more than anything. Uh, between this and probably the Dyma would be my guess. But who knows? Uh, the other one is good as well. The uh, cage card designer, that's good. But if you want a simple, th like a simple card, I like the more fancy card. So click on this drop down menu. You can either select create new. Or you can see I have some pre-saved stuff from basically me doing my try on error stuff. Um, I have a male background, a female background. I have a background just solely for my racks. Uh, this is important here, and I'll show you guys why here in a, in a couple minutes as we go through this. But let's just go, because everybody's, if you're starting out fresh, you're going to be starting out with Create New. So let's click on Create New and hit Next. Then you have standard QR code labels or activity specific QR code labels. I suggest sticking with the standard QR code labels because you can add activities that you can do through that QR code. Then it's not like one QR code is one activity only. So we'll just let it at standard and click next. Then here you can change uh, how it will be as far as what your parameters are for what you're printing on. Um, if you're doing say something other if you're printing on something other than um like a piece of paper a piece of photo paper whatever you probably want to do the custom like if you're doing uh the credit cards uh type of plastic cards this is where you want to put in you know the width and the height of that item uh i don't remember off the top of my head what the credit card uh sizes are um, but th this is where you would enter it. Just we'll just say we'll go 60 by I don't know 25. Oh, hold on. there we go. And then that would be what you're working with as far as like your margins and this and that. Now, obviously, you know, I'm I wouldn't suggest doing it that way. Now, if you have the the access to print off onto the um, credit cards and stuff, like I said, just enter in those dimensions. But we'll just for this video, we're just going to stick with the standard A4. Um, this is basically this is how I set mine up. And, you know, maybe if you have uh, so where you print on the stickers, you know, you want to dial in the size of those stickers in this net and one of these next sections uh, coming up, which I'll show you guys here in a very short minute. We'll click next. Now here you can change your top margin, your bottom margin. Basically, that just moves, you know, where your top margin and your bottom margin is. It moves it up, it moves it in, it moves it, makes it bigger. Changing those numbers will just kind of change how where these margins lie. Um, I didn't bother changing any of these margins. So this, again, is totally up to you. If you want to play with that, go ahead. Um, I didn't. So uh, feel free to go ahead, change those numbers, move those margins to where you want them. Uh, that's totally up to you. And once you're happy with where they're at, hit next. Now, here's where you get into some of your fancier stuff here. All right. For rows, we're just going to put four rows in and two columns. Now you can see, you know, there we would have our four rows and two columns. And we'll hit next. So that is how your sheet is going to be set up right now, as far as when you go to print. Um, each one of these cards, you know, you can see it's outlined. 
that is what each card is going to be. So you can see what that is. If you're happy with that, hit next. Now, label gap. This, I'll show you, you guys see how they are sitting right now on that piece of paper. Let's make the label gap five. You can see that, it, you know, it put a little bit of a gap in there. Uh, you can go ahead and you make that whatever you want to, folks. You know, three, five, whatever, whatever you're happy with is what you want to set that at. Um, I set mine, I think I originally used three. I can't remember, but we'll set that there like that. And then same thing for the row gap. Basically, that's just the gap here in between each uh, column. So we'll just set that at three as well. So that gives you a nice little gap there. Basically, this is just for when you're going to cut out these cards. Like for me, when I was doing it, you know, I printed them off on a sheet of paper, cut each individual card out, and went and laminated each, you know, all the cards, you know, on one big laminating sheet, and then, you know, cut those cards out individually as well. Um, slight pain in the neck, but it's it's worth the time. I promise you it's nice having them laminated because then you can put something like Velcro on the back of the cards, put a, the corresponding piece of Velcro on all the tubs, and it's just a matter of pull it off and stick it onto the next tub whenever it's time to move that animal to a new uh, tub or bigger tub. So we'll just let it at three. Hit next. Now, here's where you got to be a little bit tech savvy. You want to have some of these nice cards like this like this itself this whole background here you know my where is it? my logo the mail symbol the fade there on the card that is all considered the background you know, here you can see you know the male and the female or it's the same background essentially it's just different symbols each one of these is a different file that's important folks because when you go to save these on husbandry pro as you know which I'm going to show you here in a minute, you're going to want to save them as like male, female. So that way you're, you can keep them separated because you'll see here in a minute, but it's very important. Um, make sure you have a file for each of them because they're both equally important. So right here is where you're going to bring in your background. All right. Now these I made, the backgrounds I made on Photoshop. So I don't know, you know, I'm sure you can use other programs as well. Whatever you can use for photo editing, that type of deal to make nifty little, you know, things. Uh, whatever you use your photo editing on, I'm sure it'll it'll all work the same. Just save each one of them as their own file. Like I said, I used Photoshop to make these backgrounds. I even have a separate one for the racks themselves. Notice, you know, there's no symbol. It's just my logo and the qr code and the name of the rack there again that is all you know up to your preference if you want to do a, a qr code for the racks themselves i think it's handy when you're doing bulk feeding but neither here nor there in order to make these backgrounds you know i used photoshop use whatever you guys prefer to use to make it like if you're you if you make thumbnails use whatever you use to make thumbnails it's fine it'll work um, that's the important, that's the biggest important piece there is just, you know, you have, you can't create these backgrounds on husbandry pro. You've got to make them on another saw on another program, and then you can upload them from your saved files onto husbandry pro. So just make sure you guys remember that, um, and make sure you remember where you save them as well. Um, <laughs> so we'll go back into here. All right. We'll hit browse to find where I see them. See there, you can see I see my husbandry rack. We'll go down to. We'll bring in this. All right, because this is my this was my final one. All right, so there it is. Able, you know, it will then be uploaded onto these cards. Then now here you select the fields you want to be able to control when you scan your, your QR code. Like you can have animal name, uh, ID, type if you want, um, descriptor. Uh, you don't need to worry about sex and I'll explain, and this is where it comes into play as far as having a design for the mail. And this is where it comes in uh, into play where you have a file saved for the males and a file saved for the females because you don't need to put this on because if you put this on it'll put another it'll put a sex symbol down here into this corner 
So if you get rid of that, it's not there anymore. Um, that's where, you know, having a male, male, female symbol, you know, comes into play on your background and why you need to have two uh, separate things, two separate backgrounds. Uh, you know, basically whatever you want to put on here, if you want to use them for uh, shows, you know, you can put sale price. It's totally up to you, location. Uh, if this is stuff that you're just going to have on your racks, you know, for the most part. I would say just let, you know, whatever you want to have on it, but this is what I would put on it. Um, if you're doing it for shows, like I said, definitely hit the sales price on there. But we'll just let that be on there because this is, you know, just, it's just a mock-up at the moment. And then, you know, you can change the QR size, the font size if you want, line height. Uh, I don't know what QR padding is, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I did change my QR code size to 85. Um, makes it a little bit smaller, makes a little bit more room for all the wording. And then you can change the position of your QR code if you want it on the right. That's awesome. There you can see it changes it to the right side. I liked it on the left, so I just left it on the left. Uh, print start position, you can change that as well. Text color. Here, you can go and you select your text color. And then uh, once you pick whatever color you want, like, I, like you can see, I mean, you can pick any color under the sun, whatever works best with your background. Now here you can hide the QR code, which I don't know why you would, and you can hide the label, which I don't know why you would. And then you would hit next. Now here is where having different backgrounds comes into play. Because as you can see, you know, remember, we selected our female background. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna come over to sex type, and you're going to select female because your background is the female card. And then if you have, if you've been using Husbandry Pro for a while and you've got Animals Archive that you've sold and you don't want to print off cards for them, you want to go over here to status, and select active only. And then you click up. Now keep an eye on what all these names are here, folks, okay? You go and you hit apply. Now you can see a lot of the, you know the names change and know how that screen was and these are all of my active females that i have right now so with that being said you then go and you come over here to this box because if you're starting off fresh that is you know you don't need to go through and select each one individually you can just go and click that check mark and boom it'll select all those females there for you now what you would normally do if this is your first time going through you would save and print and it would it'll allow you to name this file since i've already got the files named for me already and i don't want to have another file lingering on here um, i'm just going to hit print but for you for everybody just starting out hit the save and print because it will then bring you to this screen which will pop up here in a hot minute there we go now you can see all of the females, all right? And that's how this will all print out, just exactly like this. So that is, you know, there again, that is why you have this female-specific backgrounds, because it allows you to do this. Now, what we need to, the next thing to do Like, now, if you like how this is, you would then go over here and hit print. If you don't like how it is, since you've saved it before, since you hit the save and print button, you would just hit back, which we'll do. We'll hit back. And wh whatever you name that file will now be in this drop down box. So you can just go and you can hit, you know, female. And all the stuff you had already chosen, all of the margins you set up are already done. You just have to go and, you know, now granted, if you need to change something with how your background was because it didn't work out quite right, obviously you need to go into Photoshop and change it there. But if you were happy with how the background was, you know, you just go through, I would just go through and double, so, you know, double check and make sure you select the right background. Um, 
I want to. Here we're gonna do this because I slightly altered. We'll do this, and then you know, obviously we have everything here. If you don't want, if you decide you don't want something, you know, obviously click X on it. Um, say at the end, it doesn't save the color of your font that you've picked yet. I'm sure that they will change that shortly though, because I think that's just, I mean, it's a minor thing. It's not much to, you know, go and select the same, you know, the font colors, it's just kind of an inconvenience. And then you'll go and you'll hit next. And then there again, you know, um, if you're doing females, you want to go into sex, select the female, make sure you go over here to active only, and then click apply and it'll, you know, do that and you can select all and you can go save and print make sure when you do the save and print though again you go and you name it the same file that you did before because if you don't it'll make a whole new file so make sure it's the same one you name it the same thing as what you're kind of just tweaking a little bit now, obviously if you're doing the male card or the female card you're going to nickname you know nick you know you're going to name them different things so that way you know which one's the male and which one's the female background and then you know you would hit save and print obviously i'm not going to do that because i already have my stuff saved but then we'll go over here and boom you can see that how this is you know it's all the same thing it's just how it's all going to come up on there Now, I will show you guys as well. We'll back out of this. Yes. All right. So we got our females all printed off there. Now we're going to go and we're going to do our males. Same thing. Like I said, we'll go here. Um, and you can even, if you're like, this is where it's going to become a shortcut because if, here, I'll back up here a minute. Because uh, I went back too far. All right. Now, if you're going to do your males and you're happy with how the females were set up, like with the margins and all that stuff, you can select the females. And when it goes to saving time, just resave it as a different name. Now, obviously, I've already got the male section set up. So I'm just going to go to the males. I'll show you, you know, just go through this again. Um, you know, we'll click on that. Boom. There's it for the males. There again, you know, all my IDs, all that stuff is all set up. All the uh, QR sizes, font sizes, all that good stuff is already all pre-set up. You got to redo your font again. It's all good, though. All good. And you hit next. Now, instead of clicking, selecting females, you select males. Make sure you select active only. And then click apply. And now it will show you all of the males that you have active you know in your collection and you just go select all and you would then this is where you would hit save and print because you don't have a mail file yet so save and print this um and then just call it mail um or whatever you want to call it just that way you can differentiate between the male's background and the female background so hit save and print and it'll give pull up a thing where you can you know name it and then you, for me, I'm just going to go over here and hit print because I already have it all saved up. And boom, there you go. It'll, it shows you, you know, exactly what you're looking at as far as how it's going to look. Again, just like with the females, you know, go down through, make sure everything looks how, like how you want it to. Um, that's the big thing is just, you know, make sure you're happy with how the cards look. Uh, I know... Like this here, it gets a little funky just because of the coloring. But when you print them off, it looks it looks better, I promise. Um, so that's how, and then if you're happy with it, you just go up here and hit print. And that is basically all there is to it, folks. Like I said, you know, I'll show you guys also my the racks stuff. Um, let's see, where is it? Racks. We'll go here down to my racks because it's basically all the same setup, folks. It's just a different file background. Um, where is 
your husband drew pro racks so we'll go click open and notice i have no field selected because this is only for the racks themselves this is what allows you to do the bulk feeding the bulk options um if you just want to go through and be able to scan a qr code and do bulk stuff this is a, what enables you to be able to do that so don't have any field selected it'll give you just the qr code and you know there again you can play with whatever you want to play with i did change the font size you'll see why to um so that way the font size is a little bit bigger but we're gonna go make that white that way it shows up nicely and then we're going to hit next now here we're not going to worry about playing around with any of this stuff now you could if you wanted to you know you could do it um here in this section but we're just going to go up here we're going to hit, just select this and print off one for each rack and then you would obviously hit save and print so that way there again it goes and saves how your rack setup is for if you ever need to go back in for when you add more racks or whatever expanding you know you just pull this up and obviously then you would just select that one rack that you're adding in as opposed to printing off all whole you know all however many racks you have uh it'll allow you to select which rack you want to do then and like i said save and print but for me i'm just going to hit print since it's already saved and boom there you go folks there you can see my rack design so that's really all there is to it um it's super simple super easy you know if i can do it anybody can do it all right folks so that's all there is to doing all these labels i know it's probably a lot to kind of cram in there and if you guys have any more questions you know drop them in the comments as related to any of this stuff i will try to help you out um there's certain things like the dymo stuff i have no experience with but i can try to get you guys the answers or you can check out the husbandry pro facebook page as well and drop a question in there and i'm sure someone in there is already using the dymo stuff and can help you i know billy from mutation creation does the dymo stuff um he put out a live stream video uh at the time of filming this like i think it was like last week maybe where he covered you know how he does the dymo stuff it was very informative as well so definitely check that out if you have any dymo stuff so check out mutation creation for that one and that's gonna be it for this week's video like i said if you have any more questions drop them in the comments i will try to help you guys out as best as possible let me know also what you guys would like to see coming up next for the next video drop on the husbandry pro you know how to series here um i have i think i know what i'm gonna go with next i'm not i'd like to see what some of the other people would like to see as well and then i'll kind of figure that out um i do have a baby on the way so it might you know we're gonna try to we're gonna try to be punctual and keep one husbandry pro uh series video you know per week until we cover basically the whole thing of husbandry pro and we'll see where we're at from there but thank you everybody for all the support i greatly appreciate it definitely make sure if you aren't using husbandry pro yet and you're watching this just to get an idea as to what's going on with this software click our partnership link in the description down below i greatly appreciate all the support that way husbandry pro knows that i sent you also, make sure you guys check out the sponsors of this week's episode as well. I greatly appreciate being partnered up with all these fine people. And it's just great to have such a great community built around me as well. Everybody, I greatly appreciate all the support. Sponsors, I appreciate all the love and support as well. I love working with all of you. And that's going to be it for this week's video, folks. Like I said, drop all those comments, what you would like to see. If you have any questions, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. Definitely ring that no notification bell, though, folks. That way you know when when the next video is going to drop. I mean, that's the best way to know what when a video is coming up. So definitely check that out, and I will catch you all next time. Later.